Positive news. Positive news. Today's program is dedicated to the courageous and resilient people of Ukraine. We open and close the program with two versions of the Ukrainian national anthem. The program continues with praise for Ukrainian President Zelensky. Then we learn of the impact that Finland and Sweden will have upon joining NATO and will witness the world's central kitchen's vitally important work feeding the Ukrainian people. Following that, we'll witness how Ukrainian refugees are being welcomed in Ireland. And then we'll hear the anti-war song, I Want a War, by singer-songwriter Dale LaDuke. Finally, we'll learn how UNICEF is helping children and families in Ukraine. Today, the House of Commons, last week, the European Parliament and the United States Congress. Volodymyr Zelensky has taken his raw, unvarnished message straight to the world's power brokers. Support us. Rarely has a wartime leader besieged in his capital taken the whole world to the very heart of his leadership. And how the world has responded to this image, with even the road outside the Russian embassy in Washington, D.C., renamed in his honor. Whatever happens, this will be his legacy. When Ukraine and the world at this most darkest of hours needed a leader to unify everyone, it found that leadership in Volodymyr Zelensky, arguably the greatest communicator of the 21st century. Both NATO and Russia have eyes on this Swedish island. Once inhabited by Vikings in as early as the 8th century, this piece of land is of strategic importance. That's because it's located in the center of the Baltic Sea and is on NATO's European front line. But it's also the only waterway where Russia has direct access to the west. Gotland is just one small part of how NATO could benefit if Sweden and Finland become members of the bloc. Both nations have said they will take steps to apply for membership of the Western Military Alliance. It is a very significant shift. These are two countries that have sought to take a position of military non-alignment. Finnish and Swedish membership in NATO. 
would greatly enhance the defense of the Baltic region and reduce the chances of Russian adventurism or attack across the air, land, and sea domains in an integrated fashion. Analysts say the expansion of the bloc could make NATO stronger and affect Russia's current strategy in Ukraine. To understand how, we need to look at the geography and military capabilities of both countries. The location of both Sweden and Finland would mean the alliance has significantly more land in the east of Europe. Take Finland, for example. It has an 830-mile-long border with Russia. But if we look a little closer, we can see that this border is full of lakes and marshland with very few roads for military vehicles, such as tanks, to travel on. Analysts say those conditions would be beneficial for NATO in any potential combat situation with Russia. From a NATO point of view, it's a huge opportunity. So you think about combat in Ukraine over by Kiev, where Russia was trying to push down really narrow roads. That's Finland. One key area for Russia is the Kola Peninsula, where Moscow houses sub-launched ballistic missiles that are key to its nuclear arsenal. Currently, the only NATO country bordering the zone is Norway. But analysts say if Finland joins the bloc, it would increase pressure on the region. So suddenly, if Finland's having an exercise up here, it's not just Norwegian forces, you know, maybe a brigade or two. Now suddenly, it might be 50,000 troops. So again, Russia has to now divert troops up there. In Sweden, Gotland is strategic for Russia because it could be a base to protect its naval forces in the Baltic Sea. And they would use that as a base of operations for amphibious assault, for land attack, for air attack, and for naval attack. In 2017, NATO and Sweden worked together on a simulated mission of a Baltic Sea attack, which Alberg said concluded the island would be a central part of any invading strategy. Although Finland and Sweden have been close NATO partners for decades and worked on such joint missions, they have remained militarily non-aligned. For centuries, Sweden has largely avoided involvement in military conflicts, while Finland stayed out of NATO after the alliance formed in 1949, largely to avoid provoking Russia. So the fact that they are deciding now to potentially join the alliance, I think is very significant and speaks to the sense of vulnerability um, that countries feel in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Russia's invasions of Georgia in 2008 and Crimea in 2014 sounded alarm bells in both nations, but the current war pushed them to reconsider NATO membership. In response, Russia, which has long stood against any eastward expansion of the bloc, has issued threats. According to the Kremlin, Russian President Vladimir Putin told the Finnish president that ending the country's decades-long non-aligned defense policy would be a mistake for Helsinki. And Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Alexander Grushko said that Moscow would need to take adequate precautionary measures if NATO were to deploy infrastructure for nuclear weapons near Russia's borders, including in Finland. I think one of the reasons that we've see, we saw um, the invasion of Ukraine is because they are not a member of NATO. And that, you know, Russia felt that they could therefore take the action they did without incurring a direct response from NATO. And so I think that is something that will be playing into Moscow's um, strategic calculus, that once these states are, if they become members of NATO, then it will have to take you know, more indirect action. The addition of Finland and Sweden to NATO would also enhance some of the bloc's shortfalls in air defense, according to Alberk. They do not have sufficient vehicle-mounted air defense systems. Uh, NATO air defenses, especially in the east, are very, very weak. And, and again, this is a huge capability shortfall that NATO is attempting to address. Sweden's advanced purchases of air-launched cruise missiles and Finland's $9.4 billion purchase of 64 cutting-edge US F-35 fighter jets would significantly improve NATO's air defense and attack capabilities. And it could require Russia to add countermeasures to that potential threat, analysts say, spreading its resources thin while trying to establish air dominance. But some analysts also believe that the introduction of Sweden and Finland into the bloc could fit into a broader plan by Russian President Vladimir Putin to realign his forces to different regions. I think Russia thought a long time ago that Finland and Sweden would end up joining NATO. I think it helps Putin in terms of his messaging that NATO is scary so that he can divert resources from human development in Russia towards military
Ukrainian-born Oleksiy is 17. When fighting broke out in Ukraine's Donbas region in 2014, an American family from the state of Missouri adopted Oleksiy and his sisters from Donetsk orphanage. He recently returned to the region with his dad to help relieve the pain of Ukrainians who flee to Poland to escape the carnage of the Russian invasion. I'm just uh, here uh, doing my part in helping Ukraine because to me it's, it's my home, my original home. I got adopted when I was 10 and that was right about when the war started, so a couple weeks after we had left. And now I'm just here trying to, you know, actually taking time away from my you know, job from the United States and helping out. He volunteers with World Central Kitchen, an organization that operates at eight border crossing points between Poland and Ukraine, and that began serving hot meals within hours of the initial invasion. Its operations extend to other neighboring nations, including Hungary, Moldova and Romania. Anna Bornstein, who heads World Central Kitchen's relief operations, said hot meals are an essential first response to refugees. Having World Central Kitchen kind of stationed at each moment of that journey is sort of a touch point. They kind of recognize that, that blue flag and know that there's something there waiting for them, um, some comforting meal, something that can be a grounding moment in this really chaotic journey. We'll be here as long as we're needed. That's, that's what we do. We show up immediately. We believe that food is a human right and it is an urgent right. People, when they're hungry and when they're in crisis, they need food now. To maintain supplies of fresh food, World Central Kitchen works with local restaurants, caterers and food trucks. We're here in Poland, so the support and assistance that Poland and the Polish people are providing has been incredible to see. And then we're seeing volunteers from all over the world come here at Medica at this crossing. There's tents, there's organizations, there's medical groups, there's people providing all kinds of services, um, taking time off, traveling from all corners of the, the globe to come work with us and work here to support the people that are coming over the border. This family just crossed the border, having fled from Borodyanka, a bombed out village near Kiev. The rockets hit our village and we did not even know about it because we didn't have connection. Next day I went to the center of the village and discovered it. Noir is Armenian. His family settled in Ukraine when Russia occupied part of Georgia in 2008. Armenian, Georgian and Ukrainian. Fourteen years later, they become refugees in Poland, not knowing where they will sleep next. Nwar and his family are among 1.9 million people who crossed the border to Poland since the war began on February 24. Poland has mobilized to provide shelter while also giving Ukrainians a right to work and education. Kristina Queen, the acting U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, visited the border checkpoint at Medica. She said that the outpouring of help from private and international organizations has been astonishing. The ambassador underscored America's commitment to Ukraine. The U.N. organizations are now uh, set up and starting to work as well. But until then, the United States has been sending things in both on the humanitarian side, on the security assistance side since day one. Muroslava Gungadze, POA News, Medica, Poland. Sunbright birds feeding and nesting places unheard and mostly unseen. I just knew that I had to protect my kids. I have to bring them to the safe place. I just have to go. And we sit in a car and I start driving like crazy. It's about 160 kilometers per hour. I was driving through red traffic lights and the uh, town was empty, absolutely empty, nobody. And I understand, I just have to go. You know, usually people, they 
nowadays they go where Google tell them to go. But I decided to pick like small road. And of course it was kind of dangerous because you don't know if they're safe there or not, if we can go by this road or not. But actually, thanks God, because, you know, <laughs> I think God was leading us, really. Because when I'm looking back, I'm thinking, how we did this? <laughs> really, how? During all journey, Stephanie, nine years old child, she never cried. She never told me she's scared. She never told me that she wants something. I told you she, we did not eat, we did not drink, we just go. Time, I just asked her, where are you? And she told me, I'm in Kharkov. And in this time, uh, we was watching TV and we saw that Kharkov in the moment, it's all in an explosion. It's absolutely destroyed. And she was sitting in the sh shelter with her family, with her niece, which 11 years old. She was with no food, no water, and through internet she tried to help my child hello they couldn't find accommodation, they couldn't find a work. Their decision was to go back to Ukraine. And in this moment, when they really did not know what to do, I gave them a call and said, come on, come to Iowa. It's a magic twice.
about 50 kilometres from the border of Poland. Uh, this border is packed with cars, cars that have come for days and days to get to this point. People are also walking. This is 50 kilometres, that's a 10 hour walk. It's freezing, it was snowing a couple of minutes ago. Today has been a day soaked in sorrow, more stress and sadness that I can almost ever remember seeing. I'm just watching all day fathers farewelling their daughters and their sons as they're fleeing across into Poland. Husbands farewelling their wives. Families being separated. It's gut-wrenchingly sad. But amid all of that, amid all of that sadness and sorrow, then you find places like this where communities rally round, where communities are here from dawn till dusk, cooking food, looking after children, helping people on that journey. That's also what's happening here amid the crisis in Ukraine.
I'm standing up for Ukraine. To all the world leaders, we need you now, more than ever before, to answer the call from everyone, activists, advocates, and volunteers who are working to support refugees from Ukraine and around the world. Tomorrow, you'll meet to decide how much support you'll be able to give to these people who have been forced to leave their homes, their country, their loved ones. Please, stand up for these refugees everywhere and give every bit of financial support that you can. Thank you for watching Positive Spin. This show is made possible through the generosity of the Patty and Jack Wright Foundation and the Prem Rawat Foundation. Watch and subscribe to our previous episodes on YouTube and please like us on Facebook. Follow us on Free Speech TV, Roku, Sling, Direct TV, Dish Network, and Apple TV. I'm Bill McCarthy. Stay safe and healthy. And remember, you can create your own positive news.